If you're a regular viewer of this channel, then what I'm about to say might shock you, but I'm gonna say it anyways. Laceless football boots were a great idea. I was born in 1993, one year before the release of the original Adidas Predator, a boot that I would argue is the most important football boot to come out in the last 25 years. The reason why I bring that up is because I really feel like I've grown up in a golden age of football boot evolution, because prior to 1994, the release of that original Predator, all the boots that you could buy had the same stud pattern, they had simple leather uppers, they were effectively just variations of the Adidas Copa Mundial, which was a very important boot for its time, but from 1982, the release of the Copa, up until 1994, there wasn't a lot of tech evolution in football boots. And just a quick side note in regards to the OG Predators, I do a podcast with J Mike from Unisport, it's called Boot Nerds, and I'm gonna leave a little pop-up in the corner of the screen to the latest episode where me and Jay break down the football boots that changed the world, one of those boots being the 1994 Predators. And J Mike actually drops some pretty insane knowledge into the backstory of the development of that boot and how it's actually a concept that Adidas did not want to do in in the first place. It's a really cool story. I didn't know it until he told it to me. And if you're interested in that kind of stuff or that kind of content, go check out the latest episode and make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Now circling back to the initial statement that I made at the start of this video, because you're probably thinking at this point, what the heck am I talking about? I think that laceless boots were a great idea from the standpoint that Adidas did this and now nobody else can do it without being accused of copying Adidas. And who does this hurt more than any other brand? Well, it's their main competitor, Nike. Look, I've been highly critical of laceless boots from the beginning, and I'm still of the opinion that it's not the best way to make the best fitting or the best performing product. I will give Adidas credit where it's due though, from the original A16 Plus Pure Control, which technically isn't their first laceless boot, more on that a little bit later, they've definitely evolved the technology and with these newer designs, with different materials, they have actually made laceless boots better than they were at the start, in my opinion. But either way, how does it make any sense for me to say that I don't think laceless boots are all that great, but I do think that they're a great idea? Well, the answer to that question is because of brand recognition. As much as I'm into seeing how different boots fit, feel, and perform, I think what is equally as interesting these days about the modern football boot industry is the marketing side of things, which has become complete chaos in the age of social media. Now, when you're talking about straight marketing, nobody does it better than Nike, and nobody spends more money on marketing than Nike either. With that said, there's one thing that no level of marketing will necessarily do, and that is brand recognition. It's kind of the reason why marketing exists. They want you to see the latest products. They want you to see their brand. They want you to be thinking about them. But with Adidas, and the reason why I think laceless boots were such a great idea, is when you see a laceless football boot, regardless of whether or not it's made by Adidas, you think about Adidas because they did it first. But Jeff, they didn't do it first. Lotto did it back in 2006 with the Lotto Zero Gravity. But here's the thing about this boot back in 2006. Nobody bought it and nobody cared. So when you're talking about the first ever laceless boot that was successful, it's this guy right here, the A16 Plus Pure Control, which is why when you think about laceless football boots, you probably don't think about the Zero Gravity, you think about the Adidas brand. And let's think about this for a second. How many brands out there have a specific technology or a design concept that if any other brand does something similar, they'll get accused of copying? If anyone outside of the Adidas brand makes a laceless boot, they're going to be accused of copying Adidas, or at least people are gonna think, hey, that's just like what Adidas is doing. So why would I buy the copy? Why not get the originals? And that's where I think Adidas has been really successful with the laceless thing in that nobody else will ever be able to do it, Nike included, without being accused of copying Adidas. And if you're like me, you probably started thinking about other technologies that are so closely tied to a specific brand that if anybody else does them, they'd be accused of copying. Nike's ACC technology comes to mind, although because it's kind of an invisible thing, it's not really something that any other brand could copy. Nike definitely made a huge splash in the football boot industry back in 2014 when they launched their mid-cut flyknit boots, the Magista Oprah 1 and the Nike Mercurial Superfly 4, two of the most important football boots in the modern football boot era. But Maybe at that time, maybe for a year or two, if anyone else did a knitted boot or a mid-cut boot, they were accused of copying Nike. But at this point, 
everyone has knitted uppers, everyone has mid cut boots, and nobody is saying, oh, this Predator, because it's a knitted upper and mid cut, is a copy of that original Superfly. It's not something that really stuck with the Nike brand as something that you could call proprietary. Maybe the anti-clog sole plate, although I don't think that that's a huge seller for the Nike brand as it is. And really the only other example that I can come up with right now would be the Netfit system on a Puma Future. That's very proprietary to Puma, and I think if anyone else tried to do something like that, they would get accused of copying. And don't get me wrong here, Nike has been hugely influential, arguably more so than Adidas, when it comes to the evolution of football boots over the last 25 years but with that said probably the most important football boot for the Nike brand and for modern boots in general the original Nike Mercurial Vapor 1 which was way ahead of its time and I definitely think changed the way that people viewed football boots and how they would evolve from there forward that was just a concept the speed boot concept you could credit to Nike but everyone makes speed boots now and just because it is a speed boot maybe we might compare it to a mercurial but it doesn't necessarily get viewed as a copy where again Adidas has really done a good job of tying the laceless thing to their brand being that they were pretty much the only ones doing this for several years so it really is their thing another great example of this would be the t90 line versus the predator line the adidas predator did it first a leather upper or some kind of an upper with the rubber striking elements that is to me what defines a predator so when nike came out with the t90 lasers and had their rubber striking elements it was almost always viewed as an alternative to the predator a copy if you will you didn't think t90 without considering what the latest Predator model was. Now obviously Adidas took the Predator line and more or less brought it to the point where it was dead to where they actually did have to kill it because no one was buying them anymore and it's kind of back although it's this laceless sock thing now so it almost doesn't count but still another great example of Adidas kind of outsmarting Nike with introducing a technology that was so out there but actually caught on that if anyone else tried to do it it would always be viewed as a copy and that to me has been the big difference between Nike and Adidas in the modern era of football boots they're two brands that everyone wants to compare I would make the argument that Nike has definitely been more influential in regards to the entire football boot industry with the new tech, the new materials, the new concepts that they've introduced. But all of those kind of elements have gone on to more or less be copied, if you want to call it that, by other brands without those brands really suffering from being called out. In the case of laceless technology or even the Predator concept with the rubber striking elements, those are such big I guess evolutionary changes in the football boot industry that because Adidas did them first and nobody really followed suit for a couple of years, it kind of remained as their thing. So if anyone were to ever try and do it, it was always going to be viewed as a copy of the thing that Adidas made up. And that's the one thing where Adidas has really outsmarted Nike over the years. And that's pretty much it for this one, guys. Maybe I'm a little bit weird, but this is the type of stuff that I think about on a daily basis. And keep in mind that this is all just my own personal opinion. Feel free to share your own down below in the comments of this video. If you enjoyed this one and perhaps want to see more kind of discussion videos like this, where I talk about football boot history, a little bit of opinion, a little bit of theory, leave a like on this video and maybe I can make more stuff like this because honestly, I enjoy talking about football boots in general, whether it's the boots themselves or just the history of football boots and the evolution of all the different technology that has been introduced over the years. Like I said, the last 25 years of football boots have been pretty insane if you look back at how much they've changed. Either way, if you have any questions for me regarding today's video topic, leave it down below in the comments and I'll do my best to get an answer out to you as soon as I possibly can. If you're not subscribed already, be sure to hit that subscribe button along with the little bell notification so you get notified when the next new video goes live. If you want to follow me on social media, all of that's linked down below. And other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.